What do you think? I think we should stop bottom and work up. That's kind of what I envisioned. I was thinking it was here. I don't care. Let's just, how would I you just prefer? Think I, so the reason why I think we need to start at the top is because we're not going to know how deep we need to dig. Maybe it doesn't matter. going to get a lot of vegetables going and we're not experts at this so we're learning I think that uh, gardening and farming is actually one of the biggest overlooked skills when it comes to uh, bushcraft and survival and, and more wilderness living but even when people talk about wilderness living which is kind of long-term survival not a lot is discussed uh, about uh, growing your own food and it's such an important thing because uh, around here uh, you know nobody really traditionally lived not for the last you know several thousand years as pure hunter-gatherers uh, indigenous people did farm and that's how they managed to sustain uh, large populations now they, they farmed only um, vegetables and that's what we're doing here so uh, I'm no expert at this but I'm learning as I go along and I'm gonna be able to share what I learn as well
Gather any moss, honey? No. Is that a reference that I should know? A rolling stone gathers no moss, it's a saying. Yeah, so just a little bit more, but in the middle, but looks good. Hey, look what I found, huh? Digging in the ground. Found one of these gnarly little dudes. 
ton of worms, but that is a Helgramite. Eventually they start to look pretty much like a crayfish, but they're a bug. Then they turn into fish flies, which are gigantic flies that actually are known to kill and catch minnows. And they are amazing fishing bait. So definitely a sign of late spring. They're a sign of a healthy ecosystem. Thanks, sorry. Even though they're creepy AF. <laughs> What an evening. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious. It is finally beautiful. We have had days and days of miserable weather. It looked like it was gonna be an early spring and then we got these dumpings of snow, etc., etc. But uh, man, has it ever been beautiful today. So Tori and I have been doing a few things out on our property. Um, we've had the whole, uh, current situation kind of holding me back from uh, some backcountry trout fishing I want to do but luckily I live right on this river and I think I'm going to get out for a paddle tomorrow. I feel uh, lucky because a lot of people just can't do that with the zombie apocalypse that is upon us right now. But um, yeah so Tori and I spent some time outside on this beautiful day and we got a vegetable garden started. Now we're going to build a three-tiered cascading vegetable garden. We got one spot of our property that gets a lot of sun um, and it's also on a hill so it's not really an area we're using for much else. Well it turned out to be a little more work than we thought because we really had to dig down a couple of feet into that hill and move that dirt in order to sort of get a leveled raised bed but after a, you know a little bit of elbow grease and a lot of time we're pretty happy with what we came up with. We got a nice level bed that's a, a bit of a retaining wall in the back and a lot of area to grow some good vegetables. We got eight feet long and four feet wide and a two foot uh, retaining wall on the back. And we're gonna keep cascading them and put three like that. So this is the first of them. Each one's gonna 
you know, have a little bit of a different challenge uh, because the hill is on different slants at each point of the hill. Um, this one was a little tricky to kind of make sure we got it level, but uh, we managed to do it because, you know, we want it to, to look half decent. It's a vegetable garden. It's a functional thing for sure, but it's also something that's going to be, you know, here at our home that we're going to be looking at every day. And we want it to look pretty nice. And I think we did a decent job with that. I'm happy. I got to put the saw horses that I built the other day to use as well. Um, also for milling uh, lumber, we have a bunch of logs that we're going to mill to lumber as well. And what? Did you burn the chicken? This one's still on fire. Wow. Wow, I've never ever in my life seen chicken burnt that badly before. How many pieces are on there? Well, Tori is a woman of many skills. Cooking is one of them. Barbecuing, not so much. Uh, but uh, she threw some chicken on. I, I tried to give her a few pointers, but uh, you know, it's my fault too. I should have known. I was here right beside it, so my bad. But these things happen, you know, you can't uh, cry over spilled milk or burnt chicken. Probably maybe a little more closer to crying over burnt chicken than spilled milk, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna hold it in. So I suggest if your wife burns the chicken, you do the same. If she burns the beer, divorce her though. So I'm gonna solo some white water tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. I'm gonna head out this way. And then, uh, you know, we're gonna resume work on this garden as well. These are going to be the stakes for the next box. We were using uh, two by fours and um, some basically end cuts and one that I ripped, but uh, we ran out of those. So to save us a trip from the store and uh, we're going to use these uh, pieces of leftover slat that we had sticking around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
building the next tier in me and Tori's terrace vegetable garden. But I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far. Yeah, we'll get a nice 2x4 out of this. And a cedar too. And then this is perfect. Eh? See what I'm saying? See how much nicer this is than those old pieces? Yeah. So this is a 2x8. I milled it with my Alaskan chainsaw mill and then uh, ripped it with a table saw into lumber. So it's looking pretty good and that's going to be one of the front pieces to uh, the terraced cascading vegetable garden that Tori and I are putting in.
Alright, should I screw it on? Yeah. Do you have screws? I made the laminated stakes because uh, it means they won't split when I drive them in with the mallet like the other one. Hi, Mom! Spent a good portion of the day outside again today building the next tier in me and Tori's terrace vegetable garden. We built uh, this one a little differently, putting the angled piece on the front bottom as opposed to the top back. And it looks pretty cool, but it was also um, definitely a way that uh, we could kind of work with the natural slope of the hill and build into it. So yeah, great day working outdoors and one more step done before uh, we get this thing completed and get some vegetables growing. So it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far.
I think this is the biggest load of shit I've ever seen from you. <laughs> what does it smell like? It doesn't smell bad. It's, it's seasoned, like it's aged or whatever. Aged to perfection. Perfect. Damn, those gardens look good. Mix it all in together. Yeah, we should just scoop some into the next one. Okay. And so then scoop build. this into there and then. You know what? Oh, we're gonna get grass fucking going.
Sometimes the river can be generous. This was an old piece of driftwood, but it was a two by six piece of lumber that Tori found. Kind of actually has a neat rough cut look, but we ran out of stakes and uh, Tori pulled this out of the river and uh, is able to cut this into some stakes. So, right, living on this river, there's kind of a big back eddy and every spring a few things wash down and kind of collect there. We make use of it, bonfire wood, little art projects, whatever. So the river provides. And then we could uh, just unscrew the front board, you know? Tori, could you come help for a sec? Okay. I just was turning this off. All right, here, you go to the other end. Here, want me to do it? Sure. Come to the middle. I have one too many ciders. <sighs> yeah, perfect. mando.
down. We only need eight feet. Like, that's pretty good, you know? Well, we and only then, need what, eight feet. What, this side right. is good. Yeah, and when we're going to be... Back's blown up. Boy, smell that manure. That's this end all we Do a, do a dig down this side, hun, for the shot. Wesley! Wesley! Hey, bud! Do you want to do this before getting the manure?
think all this is gonna fill that? I think, I think so. Okay, is that too much? Yeah. Some of the natural soil in for sure, right? Eh? Yeah. Mixing though, eh? Yeah. So we need to order a sprinkler. Probably just have one at home hardware. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Let's get a decent one, you know? Yeah. some puffball spores so hopefully more of these grow around here and we can get more puffball because they're edible before they start sporing
beautiful day today and Tori and I just finished our three cascading raised beds. Um, today we got a whole load of manure. It's actually uh, topsoil, so it's, it's very aged manure, so it doesn't uh, smell really bad. But uh, topsoil and manure basically, um, I suppose you can say in this case, are quite similar. So it's a uh, very manure rich topsoil, we'll call it. So we mixed in some of the uh, kind of triple mix that we bought out of bags and we mix in some natural dirt. You don't want to use um, manure that's too fresh because it's too acidy and uh, things aren't going to grow properly. So it's got to be aged and I think this is aged pretty well, aged like a fine wine. And uh, actually worked out pretty well because we were able to slide it all down the hill and get them into the raised beds. All the raised beds are full, they're all level, they're all pretty much done. Um, there's going to be a little bit of uh, landscaping, if you will, with uh, kind of steps and stuff like that to make them easier to access, uh, easier to water and stuff like that. Of course, we've got a plant. One thing I learned today that's pretty cool is that because our property is predominantly maple, the soil is going to be better than if it was predominantly pine. And that's just because uh, probably 80 years or more of just uh, those decaying kind of maple leaves and stuff like that. Also, the soil that uh, hardwood trees naturally grow out of is usually uh, less sandy than that that pines grow out of. And also, uh, the leaves uh, are better fertilizer than the needles. So that's, uh, that's great. That's great news. It means that uh, mixing our soil and mixing the topsoil and manure all together is going to hopefully be the perfect mix and uh, we'll get some good vegetables but uh, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch still a lot of time uh, of course we got a plant we got a mixed soil um, we got to uh, kind of basically landscape around the area of these cascading beds with uh, rocks maybe some rock steps make them a little easier to get to and to access and uh, we might decide to do an irrigation system too um, Tori's been doing uh, some research on square footage gardening so we might get a grid over top with string just to kind of uh, block out each foot and that way we'll know exactly how many vegetables we can put of what type we can put in each square foot and that's uh, apparently one of the best ways to uh, deal with um, gardening to get a maximum yield for a small amount of space so I'm excited to get into that too so uh, yeah it's looking pretty interesting it's looking like it's uh, gonna be a great spring but lots more to do
I've got this stand of balsams on my property and they're all growing really close together. Um, so if I take one or two down, the rest of them will grow into maturity where if I just leave them all growing really close together, most of them will probably die or be stunted in the, in the uh, shorter term. Uh, so I decided to take some of these balsams and strip them and uh, I'm going to use them as fence posts um, which I'm going to attach chicken wire to uh, so we can protect our garden from the groundhog and the squirrels and the rabbits and the deer. Before I take a draw knife to it, we got, really got to make sure that uh, all these little uh, little sticks are taken off the flush. So you don't get too far with the draw knife. draw knife that I'm using. It's a little curved. So it's great for uh, peeling smaller size logs like this one. Perfect.
few uses for this bark. Makes good twine. It's kind of different cool projects you can do with this bark. So I'm just going to hang it up in the tree here to dry out. And uh, yeah, when it's uh, um, when the tree's green like this, especially in the spring, it's definitely a lot easier to get the bark off.
so nicely make such good uh, kindling and uh, it would be perfect for the fence post but I only have uh, so much cedar um, on my property and balsam seems to be a lot more plentiful because uh, of the stage the forest is in here right now so that's why I use balsam, but cedar would be better. So I just hauled the logs back here. I got them cut into lengths about uh, six foot three or something like that. I just kind of paste them out and um, that'll give me enough to uh, dig them into the ground and still have a solid four foot high fence. And uh, what I'm going to do, especially because they're not cedar, uh, they're going to rot a little more easily. So I'm going to actually burn the bottoms of them before I place them in the ground. And that'll hold the rot out a lot longer. So I'm just going to get a fire going. I'm going to torch the ends. That's the part that's going to go in the ground. I'm going to dig holes and I'm going to place them in those holes. And uh, then we're just basically going to wrap it in one inch chicken wire. Um, now, uh, obviously chicken wire is something that uh, you have to source at the hardware store and all they have is two inch chicken wire which we're worried might be a little too wide so we might have to wait a little bit until we get that uh, but fortunately it's not we're not in dire straits because we don't have anything in the ground growing quite yet um, usually at this latitude it doesn't make sense to plant until about june 1st um, so we got some of the uh, non-native plants already sprouted inside the house which is cool so yeah, just getting a fire going and then I'm gonna burn the bottom of these things and hopefully we can get them into the ground before it's dark. Cedar makes great kindling. It burns really bright, but really fast. So it's not the best, um, it's good for, for light, but uh, it's awesome wood because it's so lightweight. So it's good for um, doing things where, like for example, building a log cabin where you need to hoist the logs up high. Um, 
birch bark canoes, uh, wood canvas canoes, great to have light wood, but uh, good for burning, not so much to get off that heat. about done nice and charred and this part the burnt part is going to be the part that goes underground It's gonna be about beer o'clock, eh, honey? Yeah, do you put beers in the fridge? Oh, you better believe it.
Well, a lot of people have been asking me what I plan to do to keep the critters out of our terrace garden. <clears throat> As you can see from the last video, there's a lot of wildlife around here. Uh, we got a groundhog that just lives under our woodshed, uh, deer around here, you name it, squirrels, rabbits. Um, it's not a whole ton you can do to protect from the birds unless you start uh, caging in the top, but uh, rabbits will put a herd on it pretty good too. And uh, the deer might sneak in here, you know, early morning and uh, trample stuff um, or just basically have their own, help themselves to a buffet. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to put uh, a chicken wire fence around it. And um, instead of just buying lumber from the store, I actually uh, went out and I cut two balsam fir trees. Uh, there's a lot of balsam fir trees around here and some of them are growing really close together. Um, so I'm not too worried about uh, taking too many trees from my property because I know when they're growing that close together, they're not all going to live into maturity. So just by thinning out a little stand a bit, um, it'll make it so uh, more trees will live long term as opposed to them all struggling and, and killing each other. So I took two and that gives me uh, all the wood I need to make my fence posts. So um, I strip the bark off of those. Uh, stripping the bark off will definitely help them last longer as well because uh, there's not sort of uh, insect and rot buildup between the bark and the wood. And then I've gone ahead and burnt the ends of them and that's gonna help a lot because it's not pressure treated wood and it's gonna be in the ground long term. Um, so I went and give, gave them a really good deep char and that's gonna prevent them from rotting much, much quicker. So the next step is to go around and dig deep holes and uh, sink these in in a perimeter of our terrace garden. So what I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna dig holes and I'm going to put those fence posts in the holes and when we can get our hands on some chicken wire, we're going to put chicken wire in between them and uh, make a little gate too so we can get in and out more easily. Um, so yeah. Uh, we can't get our hands on chicken wire. Um, there's, you know, one hardware store close to us, about 10, 15 minutes. It's great, but it doesn't always have what you need. It's a very small uh, village. And then the next one's 25 minutes. It doesn't have it. So without taking about a 45 minute round trip each way, we're going to have to wait a little till we can get our hands on it. But that's okay. We don't have any uh, plants right now in the soil yet. Um, and uh, she's also done some more mixing of the soil. She added some peat moss, um, some more local soil, and we think uh, it's gonna work well. So yeah, a couple more minutes here. I'm gonna let this last log char at the bottom, and then I'm gonna start digging. I don't know if I'm gonna get them all put in today, but I'm gonna give her a good shot.
are really going to be dictated by what kind of soil I have. The last one, I couldn't get it in because it was all just raw. This one's just about perfect. So, because this hole was nice and deep, I was able to reinforce it with rocks and I decided to use a thicker one of my posts because uh, the thicker posts are going to take a little more to support them. Bugs are starting to come out. It shouldn't be too, too bad of a bug year this year. Last year was just brutal. Well, it's a good sign if we can budge it, but it's like I need the leverage of a pick but without digging the hole freaking ten times bigger. It'd be hard to haul out of here. Yeah, pry bar too. Big guns. Yes. <sighs> well, some holes are harder than others. <sighs> Get out of there, you bastard. Well, good news is that the hole's deep enough now. Hello, China. Yeah. Right on.
there, see? Or if you push the dirt in, there's some rocks. How's it going out there? Good. This one was ridiculous. I took it a boulder, I used it again. I took it a boulder, like, I, I had to dig it like a mat. It was crazy. It was really dirty. It was like, it was a war. It was, it, it was just, it was just me versus the boulder. But it's super secure. want to look at I'm gonna put there's gonna be three posts at the front because I'm gonna hang the door between one of the corner posts and another one so I might put something here this one might be interesting we got a big rock right here keep your fingers crossed oh uh oh not a good sign. You don't know if it's going to be a piece of cake or a pain in the butt. sneak down beside this big boulder. Oh yeah. It's not gonna be perfectly where I want it to go, but there's no way I'm getting this freaking house-sized boulder out of here. Twenty-two inches deep, except for the very first one. Okay, it's pretty damn good. I'm really working hard out here, honey. Yeah, I want to get the shot. How are the bugs? Oh, I've got a mosquito coil going over there, but no, they're not bad. I think this uh, burning thing was key, especially because we couldn't use cedar. Yeah, you know? why do you burn it again? Just because it stops it from rotting. Okay. You know, it just like zaps the moisture in it and creates a barrier in between it because like burying it in soil is like the best thing you could do to try to get it to rot. You know what I mean? So by burning it, you create a barrier uh, that will last a long time before the rot sink, sinks into the wood. What do you think, Tor? I think it looks great. All right, stamp of approval. Okay, so last one. Um, and this one is actually gonna go in the front and uh, our door is gonna be here. So this is how we're gonna access it, through this door. So I'm gonna put two sturdy ones here and uh, those will hold the door and that's how we'll access it. And then chicken wire is gonna be surrounding the whole thing, um, which hopefully works. So he's just uh, measuring out the perimeter to make sure we uh, order the right amount of uh, chicken wire. Yeah, we'll just make the uh, the door, we'll just hammer a 2x4 onto the edge of that, you know? So, so 20 feet, so that's 30, 30 feet, 10 inches. Uh -huh. Alright, I'm going back in.
Perfect. Now this is a shovel. Great for digging holes like this. Just about right. That'll be the door. Make the door out of two by fours. Woo! That's like a hard day's work. So well, there we go. We got a bunch of logs harvested and stripped, and the ends burnt so they won't rot in the ground. Then I went ahead and dug holes and I sunk those logs into the ground, of course, putting the burnt side in and a perimeter around the terrace vegetable garden and uh, those are going to be fence posts for the chicken wire we get now we tried to get chicken wire we've been trying to get chicken wire for a couple of days and like nowhere within a half an hour drive of us has it and there's only two places that carry it so without taking a 45 50 minute drive uh, we couldn't get any and um, so we're just gonna have to wait but that's what happens sometimes when you live in a more rural area you know everyone's not gonna have everything you need right at your fingertips so you have to be patient you got to improvise and you got to plan ahead for sure um, yeah so I think it looks good um, it cost me absolutely nothing uh, I took a couple trees just from my property only two and I took balsams which are plentiful in this stage of the forest we have around here I could have taken cedars but I don't have too many of them cedars would have done a lot better at uh, at not rotting but I think by burning the ends I gave them the best chance they can get and uh, the next steps are going to be doing what we call square foot gardening Tori's been researching it a lot Tori actually today mixed in some peat and kind of mixed that soil up so we're pretty positive we have uh, a good soil mixture that's between the the native soil between some peat moss between some topsoil we bought and uh, we also we even had some uh, triple mix or just compost that we bought too so we got a lot of mixtures of stuff we got some ash from our fire in there as well so we're confident that we have what's going to be great soil and uh, yeah the bugs are starting to come out man and uh, yeah, so we're, we're feeling pretty good about that. So next step is gonna be getting uh, basically a string tied across the raised beds and tacked down on either end to sort of make it into square feet so we know we can we can uh, plant this many on this side, this, or this many in this square foot, and this vegetable can grow this many in this square foot, and also what vegetables will grow best close to each other. So there's all kinds of tips and interesting stuff to learn. It's really a science. So that's exciting. We're learning more about that. Looking forward to share some of what we're learning about that and uh, looking forward to getting the next steps done. But felt great today to get this step done. A heck of a lot more work to say the least than uh, just going and picking up some two by fours from the, uh, you know, from the hardware store. But uh, you know what, this actually, I think it going to look better because those strip logs look cool so it looks more natural and uh, it costs absolutely nothing so you can't go wrong on that zero dollars is always a good price so a little bit of elbow grease but I like what we came up with sunny times
I'm really excited. I just put together a trellis for the cucumber plants. Uh, I think we're only going to be planting two um, because they do produce a lot of vegetables. And um, same with the zucchini, I'm only going to be planting two zucchini plants, so hopefully we don't um, bully the other plants out of sun too much. Um, but I'm just going to finish tying some string around the other two um, poles that I put up for the trellis. And that should be good as far as trellises go. I'm just going to stake the peppers and uh, we already have some tomato cages. Um, we might need to make shift another tomato cage just out of some stakes and some string. Um, but I think otherwise we should be um, good to go. I'm going to start um, laying a grid on top of all the beds today and hopefully we can get some stuff in the ground this week. The square foot gardening method is apparently um, a good way, first of all, for beginners to get into gardening and also for making the most out of a small space. So um, hopefully it works out. Um, everything really with this first garden is going to be a learning experience. Um, so if we get a few vegetables at the end of the year, it'll be worth it and um, we can take what we learned this year and apply it to next year and hopefully get some more stuff. You did it. Yeah. We've got more stuff done around the house too, so you know maybe it hasn't been so bad. Turn the water into wine and walk upon the sea of Galilee. I'm going to finish the door to the fence. I'm just using some uh, boards of cedar that I milled from a log and uh, getting that finished off now. Uh, my screw gun died, so uh, I got to go actually uh, rip another couple pieces of lumber and Tori's going to start the planting. I have some veggies starting to grow inside, um, so hopefully we can transfer them out here because this week is supposed to be really nice. 
um, lots of sun and um, I think they're ready to go in the ground. It feels good. Planting time is like the time when it all matters and everything kind of comes down to that. And I could see it as being uh, uh, definitely a, a moment that kind of just like has meaning. At least it does to me. Uh, the more I get into sort of a kind of home gardening for, you know, more self-sufficiency and just as a hobby, the more I realize what an integral role it played in uh, the life cycles of our ancestors and native people of North America. And it's really been uh, such an important thing for about the last 10,000 years for um, quite a, a lot of human beings on this planet. And it's something we take for granted today. So um, yeah, my, my first uh, uh, real effort at a real vegetable garden. And uh, I definitely feel like this planting time is kind of like a special moment. What do you think, Tori? Does that make sense to you? She agrees. So Tori's basically leading the charge on this because I got to rip some boards with the table saw up top. But uh, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, growing your own food for long term wilderness living is something that kind of gets left out of the whole kind of survival realm. When we talk about survival, it's always sort of short term, get yourself out. Uh, but as Ted and I learn on a loan, um, surviving a very long time and what, uh, you know, what edible food is there and how long you can actually sustain off of that is something that uh, a lot of us are a little, uh, you know, wrong about. A lot of us think we can live off of some of these survival foods and we just can't long term. And um, it kind of made me realize that, you know, if you're really gonna go and, and actually try to live in a sort of a long-term wilderness living or survival scenario that knowing how to garden would be a very key thing uh, in survival but it's often kind of looked at as more of a homesteading or more of a uh, you know just a hobby thing but I think it definitely should have more of a place um, in the survival world and it also definitely grounds you and really puts you in touch with the earth with nature where your foods coming from and you learn so much more about the symbiosis of plants and how that also exists in the forest around you and you feed yourself at the same time so it's already start, begun to have like a, a deeper meaning to me which I think is one of the probably most interesting things or the most interesting thing I've learned from this experience time to go make a door Solid. Nice and light too because it's cedar.
Good enough. Working till late in the evening. Uh, took a bit of a break to do some other things and uh, then after we got the stuff planted we thought I don't know if we want to risk it and we got more to plant for sure but uh, you know there's a lot of bunnies around here tons of raccoons deer you name it so uh, we came out and uh, we worked late and we banged off this chicken wire kind of just teamed up and got her done it was challenging because we finally found chicken wire but the only kind we could get was different widths so it made uh, a few difficulties for sure but uh, we're kind of compensating. It looks like we're getting it figured out and uh, should definitely make our veggies safer tonight. We're gonna have to do a little bit of wiring, uh, put some stakes in the ground just to, to pin it down around the bottom, but uh, uh, we can do that tomorrow and we're safe that nothing's gonna come and uh, help themselves as a little uh, bunny buffet tonight. So that's great. It's looking good though. I'm feeling good about it. Not bad for eyeballing it with a handsaw. Pretty damn good. Tomorrow we'll wire them all shut. We'll like sew them together basically. Mm-hmm. But for now we go inside and eat dinner. Alright. Shall I shut the gate? Mm-hmm. Looks good. Doesn't it look so good? Looks awesome. Yeah, the chicken wire is pretty thin. It doesn't really make it look too trashy, but you know, it's not supposed to look, it's supposed to be functional, right? But I think it kind of looks rustic and cool, you know? It looks wicked. Yeah. All right, let's go in. All right. 